Hello everyone, I am Sudipti Dandapati, working as an associate professor in the Department of English from the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. I am here to share my thoughts and views on this session which is titled as Gaining Confidence and Overcoming Fears Through Speaking Skills Part 2. So in the last session, uh, we had part 1 with the same title Gaining Confidence and Overcoming Fears Through Speaking Skills. And now today's for today's session, the title is like gaining confidence and overcoming fears through speaking skills part two and we are trying to focus on common language errors so now let me start to uh, let, let me begin my presentation or my lecture by taking you through some mistakes or some language errors that students do commit when they are uh, presenting or when they are when they're appearing or when they are like for example, if they are called for an interview, and these are the mistakes, and very nationally and internationally, uh, for exams, like national and international exams, or for competitive exams, or for campus placements, there are so many mistakes or language errors and behavioral problems that students have, and so they fail to establish a successful uh, kind of relationship or successful uh, kind of uh, you know kind of kind of relationship with the target team. Also, they fail to win victory. They fail to achieve success. So because of these reasons, they lack confidence. So ultimately, what happens if they lack confidence eventually and ultimately they gain what? Let me say they gain lack of confidence. No, they gain what? They gain victory. No, ultimately, they gain what is that like they gain bad name and they lose good name so what happens is like you know they they go everywhere and they come up with very sad faces saying that they lack confidence and they say they, they say that they are unable to achieve success in their respective prospective uh, fields but then the reasons for them you know for, for for the reasons for them to fail is are uh, uh, is just that they lack confidence and as a result they are unable to overcome fears and when they when they are unable to overcome fears eventually they lack confidence and they will ruin their future and they are unable to achieve success so these are the things that will happen these are different stages that they will be uh, going through so for that reason i'm uh, trying to say or uh, i'm trying to help you with some strategies okay how you can really overcome and what are the things that really you are focusing that, that you should be focusing on and what are the things that are essential what are the things that are useful so for all these reasons you can uh, you can adopt, uh, for example, for example, a question like this, like, what's your name? So this is a simple question. So, but then like you are, you make an, a number of mistakes by just say, just introduce yourself and you are unable to say it. it's just because you lack vocabulary. So these are so many, and there are so many reasons. In fact, it's not just one reason. So these are some popularly uh, noticed mistakes okay by um, IELTS experts and they come up with a survey and they do highlight the importance of these uh, uh, what is it like uh, strategies and they, they 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 have highlighted the common most uh, popularly made mistakes and students especially especially when they appear for this IELTS or uh, lang uh, you know for any kind of competition where they will have to display the display their speaking performance so number one mistake number one common mistakes that you make in speaking that is they have identified letting your nerves destroy your test letting your nerves destroy your test what do I mean by that that means you allow the tension to overpower you or you know the tension will overtake you instead of you keeping control 
or you know underneath your feet or in instead of controlling your emotions obviously you get overpowered and you get uh, over controlled by this tension and as a result that will ruin or destroy your test so that is why i titled uh, they titled as letting your nerves destroy your test so this will affect so many people and many candidates also get too nervous and it affects their performance and as a result so it's but then what happens is like you get tense and you are unable to uh, face the questions even though you know the answers for that but then you still you are unable to do it so that is a reason you should avoid the nervousness or the kind of uh, tension that you are going through just uh, you know you have to keep it in control so and it is very natural let me acknowledge that but then you need to keep your nerves under your control so for that reason you have to be mindful of this mistake that you very often you make and then so what you do so let me talk about the solution and they come up with a solution saying that you will have to for example on the test day so you know many suggestions they, you know uh, you know from various sources suggest that like you will have to follow some kind of you know yoga or meditation but then simple trick is that like you have to on the test day you have to feel your nerves and let them be that means you have to accept the situation that you are into you have to accept the situation decide you are going to enjoy the test decide you are going to enjoy the test be mentally prepared visualize the test visualize the test before okay close your eyes and see yourself close your eyes and see yourself and then you have to breathe the exam okay and you have to start with you know greeting the examiner with a smile you have to enter and enter the room so, you know having a nice beautiful you know cheerful you you can have a beautiful cheerful smile on your lips and then you can answer questions confidently so you have to walk out also like walk out of the room smiling and confident these are very important these are very important uh, you know useful points you can really important and these are some uh, useful uh, it's like uh, like kind of uh, kind of strategies you can use it also not seriously about language strategies but just behavioral patterns you can adapt next so during the test at the beginning you have to keep your uh, i mean uh, the language very simple when you are uh, Uh, like when you are facing them so during this test you have to keep the language very simple and uh, do not go for complicated language until and unless you know it for sure please don't try to create an impression that uh, oh my god they're seeing so i will have to use a very big word but then you're not sure of the word the meaning of the word so you will fail so that please avoid those words focus on communicating with the examiner not on using complex language focus on communicating with the examiner not on using complex language this is a point i want to say and next breathe deeply before answering any question you don't have to show it externally but inside you can take slightly you know a deep breath and then smile and enjoy the test you can definitely overcome your tension right so the first mistake is that you let your nerves destroy your test that's a mistake and then second mistake is like you give memorized answers so for example a question like this so what is the climate like where you live so instead of saying kind of you know you give textbook answers instead of saying where i live there are example where i live there are four seasons spring summer autumn winter okay so this is all kind of you know textual answers you are talking in spring the weather is temperate and mild in summer the weather is hot weather is hot humid and rainy so in autumn see you don't have to give memorized answer and but then you can memorize words and phrases memorizing words and phrases is always good however you can recite you know whole memorized answer is not good reciting memorized a memorized answer is not good 
but you can what do you, what what you can memorize you can memorize words but not the answers now the examiner wants to see you use your language flexibly so that kind of flexibility should be there in your language so what do you do you have to memorize chunks of phrases and collocations collocations of the words you can use a number of verb meanings more or less similar meanings and don't memorize whole sentences or stories don't memorize that don't practice reading out full sentences also don't practice that practice speaking from you know bullet points don't just memorize full sentences don't memorize sentences okay keep your language flexible speak out a simple phrase and practice changing the tense you know for example i i wanted to talk about my past days and then i say now how, for example how is your life my life was very difficult in the past and now i feel it is going on so see you know my shift from the present to the past time so if i can use the uh, the context or if i can shift my language to the past and the present time then i can really show the flexibility in my language so also you don't give stereotype answers always whenever the question and that really shows your memorized chunks memorized answers you can say i have lived in for in so many so in so many places for so uh, for for any particular place for many years i live in this place i will live here for one more year so you can give all such answers next the third mistake that the speakers or the students they perform they do is like what what are the uh, you know what, when they are asked for do you like shopping for clothes they give short answers one word answers no not really what is that you have to give full sentences so that shows low levels of vocabulary that shows very uh, limited uh, language structures you know okay so never do that and do not uh, that will that what eventually what happens is it will not let you show good levels of fluency okay that kind of speaking giving short answers one word answers for example many times when when we ask students okay do you, do you really do that yeah i yes how was your day bad how was your day good so giving short answers will really uh, what is it like what i have to say impede your communication so always that will also restrict your levels of fluency and so do not let that will not let you show your intonation across longer sentences so that will definitely and you all four skills uh, and language skills your vocabulary your grammar fluency your pronunciation will be marked low so you have to be mindful so what what to do what you have to do for the shopping question about you can say that why, why you do or i do not like shopping Give, a, give an example why you don't like shopping okay so also show off a bit you can you can uh, take a few risks you can take a few risks and try some complex sentences only if you are sure and uh, but don't use language far above your actual competency so use words you are very comfortable with so when you are not comfortable what happens obviously you will lack confidence and you will try to mumble and fumble and you try to always you know you you, you try for uh, complex sentences but then you are unable to defend the word or you are unable to back up your concept or you are unable to back up your answer answer with the word you've already started with so that will really give you a very uh, uh, not, not only that will give a bad impression on the minds of the listeners but also it will take away your reduce or take away your confidence levels so you have to if you have to gain confidence you have to use the language that is very comfortable to you so always adapt yourself to different situations okay accordingly it's just because you read so much it's just because you went through so many magazines or articles it doesn't mean that you will have to use it but then learning should be acquired once you acquire language automatically you will imbibe 
you acquire, you imbibe, and automatically you will show off all those words, or you will uh, display, or you perform the language that you have learned. So that is very important. So what what to do? As we said we discussed. You can say why you to the question. Do you like shopping? Instead of saying no, not really, you can say why you do shopping and why you do not like shopping. Give reasons for them, and then give an example. This is a proper way. Next, fourth question. Not listening to the question is another uh, mistake that students do. Students don't listen to the questions. And not only the students that we come across, but many listeners or many speakers, before they speak, they don't listen to the question. Always they want to speak, speak, and they don't listen. As a result, what happens? They miss the answer. They miss appropriate responses. For example, so let me give you an example here. So tell me about your neighborhood. What's it like? So when when they're asking for the neighborhood, so neighborhood and instead of saying that the candidate says like this yes i like my neighbors a lot and we get on well so you have to talk about your neighborhood and instead of saying that you don't listen to the question and you say you like neighbors so appropriate inappropriate vocabulary will lead to this problem so this often is a result you know of the tension might be like that might be you're going or any an examiner's unfamiliar accent. So the reasons, you know, for uh, you know things uh, like this, uh, like this to happen, could be because of the following point that I have put up on the slide. It's just often the results of the tension, or just like you are unable to understand the examiner's unfamiliar accent, or it's just like you listen for a keyword and then a general answer on the topic. You just listen only, uh, you know, the, you listen. Or you listen for a keyword, but then you don't understand the complete sentence, and as a result, you are unable to uh, give. You are unable to give a complete answer. And then, if you are off topic, this may happen. Okay, that will eventually affect your range of vocabulary score. Okay, and that will really give a very bad first impression. So, do not make such mistakes. Okay, listen to the question now. Uh, important and compulsory. So now what to do? What is the strategy or what is the solution? First, follow the advice in mistake number about one about most. That means in mistake number one, we talked about like letting our nerves to destroy our test. You remember? Yes, that is exactly I'm trying to hit at. So you will have to control your nervousness or tension and you have to keep that under control. And then if you are unsure that means if you are not very sure, ask the examiner to repeat the question for you. So, can you please repeat the question for me? You can ask uh, for the uh, question once again. But then, don't come up with your own silly and uh, useless or irrelevant or the responses which lack a coherence and cohesion. So, you can ask the examiner to rephrase the question for you. So you can do all these things. So follow the advice that I have given when, when you make the first, uh, I mean, the mistake that we have highlighted. Next, you can say, can you rephrase the question for me, sir? Or can you check your understanding? Or you can also uh, check uh, your understanding, like, do you mean this? Do you mean that? So that is something that you can really come up with. Next, another possible mistake that will uh, that students make is like going off topic. This is this is a very common, and of course, students are very. They are you know they are very uh, you know they are very fearful and they are not very bold. Sometimes they may not go off the topic, but some students do. For example, are unemployed people given enough support in your country? For example, a question like this: Are they are they given enough support? And the candidate say yes. Most companies have training programs for staff, including health, safety, leadership, team. See, what is the question that is asked and what are you saying? Are employ unemployed people given enough support? Instead of saying that you are taught, instead of saying whether they are given enough support in their workplace, 
but you are talking about the companies or you are talking about the training or the programs that the staff is given so including health and safety so this is all going off the topic so this may happen because a candidate did not understand the question or it just because you try to recall the memorized answer and then so because of this and you know you will tend to uh, miss the exact answer so going off topic will definitely limit your score so you have to be very careful when you are managing your time that is very important next and uh, so the solution for that in the previous slide we said going off topic is this is a problem and these are the reasons and what is that you can really do so what to do you can work on your listening skills you have to work on your listening skills so listen carefully ask the examiner to repeat the question you have to ask the examiner to repeat the question for you please work out on your listening skills listening skills is not about hearing the sounds i am talking about listening skills which means listening comprehension that means to be able to understand to be able to listen to the party patiently to be able to let them finish completely to be able to pay attention and focus when they are speaking to be able to let them complete the, the responses so all this will fall under listening comprehension so you have to work out on your listening skills so this is one of the tips or uh, that really i can suggest and then ask the examiner to repeat the question for you and then get familiarized with the common questions or also expand your vocabulary for less uh, familiar topics okay expand your vocabulary so try to use more words okay and then get lots of ideas for less familiar topics also so this is also very important so these are the things you can really follow next what are some more important mistakes that you make when you speak yes rambling talking without structure examiner for example you know rambling talk without structure talking in a haphazard way okay so let me bring that the example that these language experts that have formed you know when they come up they uh, they conducted a kind of you know uh, you know study and they came up with uh, certain mistakes that student uh, uh, students commit or students make or the language errors they make so these are few mistakes that we have highlighted and these are not only the mistakes so now the kind of rambling talk you do it talking with her, the structure so question a question like this so do you work for your student so you instead of saying about your profession or your working student you say that i'm working well not exactly a job I'm not working but i have worked for a while kind of more of a part time job or i like to study but work most time but evenings i study if i have time see so do you work or you usually have to say kind of like do you really work or if you are your student it's like you are talking about the kind of you know work efficiency or you know you are you're rambling like there is no uh, proper structure to it it's all in a haphazard way kind of you know a disorganized manner and you can, and bits and pieces of the inf pieces of the information or sentences you have so you have to avoid that so this happens when candidates get nervous again back one mistake number one when the candidates are tense they are unable to progress they are unable to speak fluently okay so this will ultimately affect your fluency mark and gives a very bad impression of you as a communicator so you need to show yourself as a clear and confident communicator so you don't want to make the examiner work hard to understand you so for example if you you don't want so you don't want to make the examiner uh, work uh, if you allow the examiner to work hard to understand what you're saying so that will ruin your 
career and so you will uh, you will come up with a different uh, uh, kind of uh, marks or credits or kind of impression and you earn a very bad name as a miscommunicator or a bad communicator so you have to be very careful with that so what to do you have to use one minute preparation time carefully so when you are given in some companies or some examiners they give you one minute preparation time you can make use of it and sometimes you will not get that one minute preparation time also so what you do is like you will have to uh, come up with spontaneous answers spontaneity is very important so think about the structure of your answer okay so think about the structure of your answers and then use connectors use connector or signposts to make it very clear what you are talking about. For example, when you are talking about your family, you can use some connectors like when it comes to my family or first of all, I want to say, or on top of that, finally, I want to come up with. So you can use this the fillers. So these are some, these are some connectors you can make use of it. We can make use when you are communicating. So they, they'll be able to understand the link you're talking. So. You can you can try to build up a very structured, very organized answers or responses, okay, to the questions they asked, right? Next, use time fillers to give yourself time to think before answering. So use time fillers to give yourself time to think before you answer. Always, for example, what are some fillers? So fillers means like you try to uh, you don't. Uh, Come up with answers, but then like, uh, mm, like this is, these are some kind of fillers that uh, you know you use unnoticingly. So instead of using those empty fillers, you can use some time fillers. Like, like for example, let me think, sir. Meanwhile, you can really think. Let me see, or that's a good question to think about, or that a good question. Yeah. Let me think. Let me see. So these are some time fillers you can say you can use. Now, next, seventh question. Using seventh mistake that uh, students make when they are communicating or in any kind of formal exam, exam or kind of any placement test or any kind of speaking test, especially for IELTS or any kind of uh, placements. So IELTS, uh, organize, or IELTS uh, have come up with uh, like a team of uh, you know people. They have come up with uh, a study and they highlighted all these problems or the mistakes that students do. And now, what is another mistake? Another mistake is using too many long and memorized connectors. Using too many long too many long memorized connectors for example like having just told you about the uh, to use more structured connectors and time fillers you may also find this a bit very different so and also like many schools or teachers teach you cohesive devices or connectors and you can uh, you know you can you can uh, use make use of like okay let let's look at this more closely so you can like for example, like you don't have to use many uh, like connectors. Like it's uh, look at this or connectives can be very simple. For example, like and but you can use all this. Then first in the end, you can use very simple connectors. You don't have to use uh, very lengthy and long connectives or memorized connectives. Okay, so these connectives can be complex also. You don't have to use and but then see but connectives like. Uh, First of all, progressing to the next next point, let me know or let me now move on to talk about. So let me now move on to talk about or progressing to the next point. Or if I were to talk about one sport, I have to choose. If I were to sp speak about one sport or if I were to choose it or let me now move it. These are all, see, these are all some connectives you can use. First of all, progressing to the next point, okay? And please avoid some unnatural, that sound uh, very unrealistic, okay? So the mistake is using too many. Don't use so many. For, like it sounds very unnatural if you use it. Like you can use some short and some long. Don't use monotonously, okay? Don't use too many short, no, too many short responses. Don't use too many long fillers also. 
use both connectors short and complex and simple short and long connectors okay so don't don't use too many at the same time and you don't have to use the same ones all the time also you can switch on to different connectors but then like try to bring this variety and a variety of you know using connect different connectors okay now another mistakes the students do not using one minute preparation time well so they don't use preparation time well very effectively so what do they do they use uh they they what they, spontaneously they want to say even if they are given one minute preparation time so if they are given one minute preparation time they don't have to go for it so instead of using all that instead of wasting the time they chit chat or they and they lose that time when you know you know in thinking see you know in thinking about the test or brooding over it or getting upset or getting stressed out about you know imagining the situation so instead of wasting your time like that use your effective time very effectively and so not using the one minute preparation time well is another mistake students should sometimes you can't focus or you get nervous as a result so lack of focus okay and then sometimes you think you're ready to answer straight away always students always audience you have to think before you speak you cannot just speak like that whatever you say okay and also students rarely do well by starting right away right away okay and without using the one minute preparation time now what you have to do it you have to prepare for the test so how do you prepare even even for that you can use only the, the 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 choice for you is like using one minute time so use one minute to practice preparing a question you have just to look that okay and then practice with as many as part two questions for example for this ielts exams and all they have part one part two questions okay so you can practice uh, with, practice with as many as part two questions and then practice preparing for them and giving answer for them giving an answer for them so also do this under timed conditions okay as though you were in an exam so you have to prepare your preparation is very important and now what do you do so this is all about preparation you prepare for the test and then under timed condition and during the test what you do you have to do read the question carefully so in written or in speak spoken context so identify the keywords and topic what are the keywords what are the significant words that are used okay and make sure you follow that make sure you follow that get an idea as quickly as possible get an idea as quickly as possible and think about the answer okay and the kind of structure of your answer the kind of structure you use and the and and the variety of idioms you use or the words you use okay you might use making your answer sound like a story making your answer sound like a story okay and prepare your first sentence so you know exactly how you uh, always like prepare well or prepare perfectly your first sentence for your first sentence and then you know exactly how you can really take off this will give you in a way kind of very good confidence students i'm telling you so your preparation is very important your preparation time is very important and also your first sentence is very important so these are some things and also additional things i would like to say after these mistakes okay after i highlight the mistake the students do next another mistake mistake number 9 is not withstanding what the examiner is evaluating not withstanding what the examiner is evaluating so you know you have to be tuned or you have to understand the pulse of the examiner or you have to understand the judgment or you have to understand the kind of uh, assessment that is happening or the kind of evaluation criteria that they come up with so you have to show all these things in order to uh, make a very good progress in this so not withstanding what the examiner is evaluating so this another mistake so for example let me give you an example examiner says graphnon can you please tell me your full name so 
You talk about WhatsApp. Yes, sure. My name is very informal, you know. What not understanding that your formal way of talking is also under assessment and is also under evaluation. So some candidates use very slang and colloquial expressions or even sometimes even more formal uh, academic expressions. So you have to avoid all those things. You know, this will come up. Uh, uh, I mean, this will come along with the practice. So practice in the sense when you start talking to your teachers, when you start talking to your elders, with all these things, automatically you will develop the way of you know speaking. Suddenly, if you are not used to it, if you are not, if you are in a if you are in the culture, you know, in a very wrong culture where you are not used to all these table manners or you know, all these different kinds of social etiquette, and your professional professional etiquette is not there, and that's where you go wrong. And due to this lack of practice, you come up with very colloquial expressions many a time, many times, or many a time. Students uh, make, for example, they come up with very uh, very very colloquial expressions kind of slang yeah yeah ma'am uh, it's like you know it's like you know a gone case so what what is the vocabulary you use so you have to be very formal when you are speaking or when you are talking to your teachers so that is where that is how you uh, imbibe and that is how you learn acquire using language formal good and variety of language structures so so when and this all you know when they use all these colloquial slang expressions or sometimes even more academic expressions that will eventually ruin their performance okay so that will spoil this performance so some can and you know another problem is some candidates try to speak too fast to impress them and others ignore and and you know critical you know they think they think grammar thinking is only you know grammar the only fancy vocabulary is important so they come up with fancy uh, uh, vocabulary and they ignore grammar they ignore grammar thinking only fancy vocabulary is very important so how is it possible it's not it's not right it's not it's not right it is wrong so when you ignore grammatical uh, uh, knowledge or when you ignore grammar and you think grammar is not very important and you focus only on fancy vocabulary it is not going to help you so you have to and another problem the students have is like the candidates who work hard trying to get a british accent and these are some mistakes. You don't have to work out on a particular American ac uh, accent or British accent. Of course, you have to. It is good to uh, use RP received pronunciation in your language, but you, you don't have to go for uh, you know completely British accent. Accent is different from pronunciation. Okay, the kind of you know slang or the kind of uh, you know intonation you use. Intonation is also very important, and accent is the way you pronounce uh, the words in particular way, a style of pronouncing the words. But then, like pronunciation is different from accent, and there is uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a small note of difference. Okay, so the way you pronounce, okay, the kind of sound you produce, the, 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 the kind of sound you make when you pronounce a particular word is accent. Okay, and the way, a style of, you know, coming using the word is, you know, is something related to pronunciation. So accent, see, pronunciation is different in America and in British. So you don't have to work for, you know, uh, British accent or American accent, but it is enough if you can speak uh, understandable, neutral communication, and it is good if you can come up with the received pronunciation that is RP standard way of communicating. Next, so what to do for that? So, what are the mistakes we saw? Notwithstanding, the examiner is evaluating. Okay, notwithstanding what the examiner is evaluating. So you speak in slang, you speak colloquial expressions and you speak, you use over formal expressions and economic expressions. Uh, sometimes you speak too slow and sometimes you speak too fast, not very moderate. Okay. And others ignore grammar and thinking that only fancy vocabulary is very important. So these are all mistakes and some exclusively work on British accent. 
and these are all common mistakes that students do. We have to be mindful of that. So, what to do for that? Don't use slang and colloquialism. Slang and colloquial. Colloquial expressions are like very informal way of using expressions. Okay, and then you can use idiomatic expressions. So, instead, use always not. Or like uh, like like you can switch on to using interesting idiomatic expressions, not always using slang and colloquialism, and then speaking at a speed that you are comfortable with. If you are very comfortable with you know communicating, articulating, you know inter you know using intonation, switching up and down, and using moderately and you know, balancing the time, you can go with that comfortable pace, but. Don't try to use uh, the kind of pace which you are not very comfortable with and thereby you try to show and thereby you definitely you will welcome all negative impressions or negative marks on your performance or for your performance. Next, speak at a speed that you are comfortable with and try to use a mixture of structures. Try to use a mixture of structures, both simple at the same time complex. Next, try to get a balance of complex but accurate language. So, try to get a balance of complex and also simple. But all but the point, but the agenda should be, or your target should be using accurate language, not making errors. Okay, so so the examiner, whoever is the examiner that is evaluating, that examiner doesn't evaluate your accent. You have to remember that examiner doesn't evaluate your accent, but what does he evaluate? Your communication. So the important thing is that you pronounce words and phrase correctly and with awareness of stress and intonation. So what is this stress? Stress is that nervousness am I talking? No. Is that something that I talked in the first slide? So is that the stress I'm talking about? No, that's not the stress. But stress and intonation are like you know the kind of emphasis that you give okay academic okay evaluation consideration so the stress falls on a so you have to apply stress and then you have to use and the rise and fall of the tone the rise and fall of the sentence the pitch of the sentence is all about intonation so you have to be aware of using the stress and intonation when you use this language okay and the last mistake that i want to focus is and i want to highlight this that students um uh, very often make is like trying to have a conversation with the examiner of course this doesn't happen all the time but then it 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 uh, happens sometimes so when the examiner asks you do you like your hometown so the candidate says yes madrid Okay, or Madras, or Chennai, or or my uh, or my Hyderabad, or Delhi, or Bangalore, whatsoever. It is lovely. It has beautiful buildings, and there is so many, you know, plenty to do. And have you been there? Have you been there? Is unnecessary. Is an unnecessary question. You you can just have a conversation. For you you can just ask. Okay, you can respond to the question asked. But you don't have to have a conversation with the examiner. Just trying to have a conversation with the examiner is something that is very problematic. So have you been there? You don't you are not there. Okay. You don't have to ask that question. That is irrelevant. So you don't have to say, have you been there? It's not needed. Okay. And then some candidates try to make the interviews into a conversation by asking questions. Some candidates Try to make the interview into a conversation by asking questions. So you don't have to do that. They realize very quickly that this doesn't work. And then immediately they will lose confidence. The examiner will not answer the questions. So have you been there? The examiner doesn't have to answer the question. So some candidates, they try to make the interview into a conversation by asking questions. And they realize very quickly that this doesn't work so they will fool themselves and they will invite unnecessary uh, insult or negative feedback to their performance or on their performance so you have to remember it's an interview you not only have to you don't have to you only need to answer the question you don't have to ask them the question 
okay it is a communicative test its focus is on your speaking ability not how well you engage and interact with us it's a communicative test it's the focus is on the speaking ability your speaking ability but not how well you engage others in your communication so note this point so what to do don't ask questions so these are some mistakes and that uh, students confront students make uh, when they appear for the uh, any for any kind of speaking test so let me take you through all the mistakes once again for your benefit so the first question or the sorry the first mistake that they make is like the common mistakes you make is like letting your nerves destroy destroy your test that's very bad do not take tension be confident and try to achieve success and then if we i, I which when we discussed many things what to do and then giving memorized answers is is a mistake you don't have to give memorized answers you can use language flexible and then giving short answers nervousness okay feeling tense and giving short answers okay is another mistake that you make and then giving memorized answers is another mistake and then not listening to the question yes this is another mistake going off the topic completely going off topic in the sense you the examiner asks one topic and you come up with a different uh, response you don't listen to the question so you you know completely completely go off the topic going off this topic or going or going off a uh, topic is very 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 common mistake that students make and then rambling talk like talk with a structure you do it that is another common mistake that we saw using too many long memorized activities connectives is another thing that we have noticed using too many long memorized connectives is another mistake we do it so you can use both the complex and simple complex and simple both okay and then not using the one minute preparation time so not 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 using this one minute preparation time very effective and trying to have a conversation with the examiner so this is also mistake this is also very wrong so trying to have a conversation with the examiner is something that you have to uh, really pay attention to and these are some questions these are i i have some uh, interesting questions for you after this uh, ppt like if you have to be or if you were the person who uh, for example if you were to be the person to answer all these questions on solution for the problems so what would you do not following these strategies how would you going to make or how are you going to uh, make a very uh, useful or positive impact on the minds of the examiners can you really establish a successful relationship without using all unnecessary i mean without using all the strategies or if you have to gain confidence you will have to lose or you you will have to shed away your fears so coming back to the title if you have to gain confidence you will have to overcome your fears so that is the first mistake we have dis we discussed here so that is like letting your nerves destroy the test letting your nerves destroy the test so don't do not take tension always try to be cool and work hard work effectively okay definitely you will be able to achieve your success and definitely you will hit the bell of success and so these are some strategies these are some uh, suggestions that that the language experts uh, have come up with and i brought forth all these important rules regulations and these are some common and silly and insignificant mistakes that students perform in and out they perform all these things just by ignoring these mistakes so you don't have to do it you don't have to make all these mistakes once you are aware of these mistakes definitely 
you will be able to overcome definitely you will be able to establish a very good uh, communication okay successful communication so with the learners with the parents or with uh, i mean of your target uh, ta target learners or ta target parents or whoever um, is a, a person that you are really trying to who could be the boss that you are uh, trying to speak or could be the examiner or could, could be any person your colleague it could be anyone it could be anyone it could be someone okay whoever you are actually like, with whomever you are communicating so that these are some common mistakes that um i want to highlight so that you can overcome these mistakes and you will be able to gain confidence and overcome fears so uh, you, you you through this speaking skills definitely you will be able to achieve success so you can gain confidence and overcome fears through speaking skills thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates